Hello everyone, I'm Rafael Alvarez and this is Alvarez Metalworks. So, um, I've been talking about this project for quite some time now. This is uh, an old retired ambulance that I picked up from my former employer and it's something that I'm going to turn into a tow rig for Project Pathfinder. Okay, so <clears throat> with that being said, we're going to get started on this thing right now. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff that need to be done with it, but essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a sleeper cab and flatbed, a short flatbed, off the back of this cutaway um, E350 van chassis. Um, this is a 1998 um, Ford E350 with a 7.3 power stroke. <clears throat> I need to change out the flex plate in it. Uh, it's got a cracked flex plate. I do have one. Uh, I just haven't really got around to dealing with it, and you know, and there's some other things that need to be dealt with on it mechanically, um, but nothing too major. Um, it, you know, I ran, it ran and drove just fine on the way home, outside of the, the, you know, the flex plate noise. But we're not going to get into that in this video. Basically, <clears throat> this is basically what we're looking to do. So we have that rectangle tube, and I need to build two frame rails that are the main structure for all of this. I originally planned on making the sleeper cab one unit and the short flatbed another unit so that it has a you know a pivot point like a pickup truck does. But then I changed my mind on that. Um, I changed my mind for a number of different reasons, but the main reason was simplicity, um, saving, t saving material, and cleanliness. I, I like the idea of having that whole sleeper and bed be one continuous piece of sheet metal. Or not a continuous piece of sheet metal, but when it's all finished, you don't have any seams. It's going to look like one continuous piece of sheet metal. So this frame rail, as you see here, you know, this is a side view again. It's going to come over here, and then it's going to overlap and step up and then come over here. The reason why we're doing that is because the lower section of that frame rail will be here. It's going to step up where the axle bumps up. Um, it's not necessarily to clear the axle because I'll have plenty of room. What it is to clear is the bump up in the frame, in the factory frame. Okay. Okay, everyone, got the frame rails mocked up. Um, they've got some spacers and things holding them in place on the frame. The reason behind that is because I need to build the body mounts or mock them up, which means that these frame rails need to be held into, into their proper positions so that I can do that. Okay, everything is squared up. Everything is at the height where those frame rails will sit in comparison to the chassis frame. And that's pretty much it. You know, I've you know I've got four inch gap between the top of the, the chassis frame and the bottom of the, the sleeper cab. You know, this section here in the back is for the flatbed. Um, here in the front, the bottom of the frame that sits underneath the sleeper cab is actually flush with the top of the chassis frame. I've got about an inch gap between, you know, the new frame for the sleeper and, and flatbed and the chassis frame, which is plenty. And I've, you know, I've got to do some modifications here. I need to get rid of that heat shield so that this sits down where exactly where it needs to be before I build up my mounts and whatnot. But, you know, the goal is to mock up all the mounts, put in some cross members here in the sleeper cab section to hold it in place, 
judge the weight of this thing because it's only going to be me, my wife, and my two kids, my two girls, picking this back up off the frame and setting it somewhere while I go through the, chire, the entire chassis and clean it all up um, before it goes back on. So I can't build too much on here because it'll get too heavy, but I need to address especially the body mounts because those there's going to be some modifications done to the chassis you know the cutaway chassis to make sure that those body mounts will work on here and those have to be done before i clean up the frame and paint it so i'm not painting it twice and you know grinding off paint and then re-welding stuff and then doing it again so with that being said that's where we're at you can expect to see that in the next video the body mounts and, the, and some of the cross members um, I'm not going to get into a lot of details about what needs to be done next, um, just to keep this video a little bit short. But what I will say is, um, you're going to see a lot of a lot of you know restoration of of the cat the cutaway chassis before we see any more fabrication work. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I did want to ask you guys for some feedback. Originally, this frame came with ten body mounts. We had three which will be underneath the sleeper. And we had two back here, or, hold on. If I'm talking about both frame rails, or six, one, two, three, four, five, six, they would fall underneath the sleeper, and four, one, two, three, four, they would fall underneath the flatbed. Those are the original mounts that were on here with the ambulance box that was on here. The ambulance box had a, a significant amount of weight here in the front section, um, dealing with seating, um, oxygen tank, gear, a lot of weight here in the front versus in the back. Um, I'm not gonna have nearly the amount of weight that they had in the ambulance as a whole, not just the box, but as far as gear and things like that on this chassis. So I'm wondering if I can get away with running eight mounts versus 10. Four underneath here, you know, four under the sleeper cab and four underneath the bed. Because realistically where I'm gonna be carrying all my weight is gonna be under the bed when I'm hauling steel. It could literally be thousands of pounds, but underneath the sleeper cab, not so much. Um, you know, four passengers at the most back there. And you know, it basically there's four seats that will fold down and turn into a bed and not a whole hell of a lot more than that. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I don't want to compromise the structural integrity of it. So I may run 10 mounts, but I've got eight polyurethane mounts right now. I'm going to contact Ford. If you guys know where to get these factory mounts, let me know. I'm go not going to reuse these ones as I said earlier in the video. Reason being is that I have to restore this frame and there's a lot of scale underneath that rubber mount. And I can't disassemble these mounts because they're all rusted and seized up inside. So I'll have to replace them with either the factory mounts or the aftermarket polyurethane that I have. So if you guys know where to get those from, you know the part number on them, let me know. It's a 1998 E350 cutaway chassis. Okay, <clears throat> I'm not sure if those mounts are the same on, on just the regular vans or not. If you, if you know that information, please help me out. Um, I've done a little bit of research, but it's not easy. Uh, you know, quite frankly, most of what you're going to find for E350 parts are for regular vans, not the dually axles and, and the commercial stuff. Um, so let me know. And what else? What else? What else? Mm -mm, I know. The, oh, yeah. I had talked about the gussets on this on these frame here. Originally, earlier in the video, I said that the gussets were only going to be on one side. That's a brain fart. Okay, that was a, that was a real stupid statement on my part. The gussets have to be on both sides of the frame um, because the gusset is actually going to be a plate, and it will be a diagonal cut on that plate that comes up all the way like that at a 45. And because these rails will be fully boxed in, I'm not gonna have open ends on them, I will have to box in the bottom of this. So for me to box that in, I need to have a gusset on both sides of the frame. So I will be doing that. Um, that will be done also before this frame comes off, or maybe not when it, before it comes off, but it will be done in the next video. Um, 
with that being said, you know, give me your guys' feedback on the body mount situation. And that's pretty much it. Remember to check out RorkSupply.com. That will, you know, I'm going to be using a ton of their products to clean up this frame, to, to do all the metal fabrication, so on and so forth. Check them out if you haven't already. If you're into this type of stuff, I guarantee you there's things on there that, you, that you're going to need. Um, use coupon code METAL. That will give you 10% off anything that you order for them, from them. Um, that's my thank you to you. It's Rourke Supplies. Thank you to you for supporting my channel. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys are interested in... Nah, never mind. Anyways, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, comment, like. Go like me on Facebook. You will see update photos from this build before you see the videos. So if you're looking for quicker updates, you know, go like me over there if you haven't already. And, you know, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later.